I don't think it's like a huge thing. I don't think it's like overblown where people go like, can't fucking say anything anymore. And I oh, go, I got the hate those guys. What are you talking about? Um, I think consequences are good, but I also think that forgiveness is great. Forgiveness is key. You know what I mean? Like people are, people fuck up. I love that you're saying this because you're at some point in life, you're going to be like, I've been how, reading how about that forgiveness I've I was talking reading, about? I've been reading a, a book about it. Um, it's called So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson. Yeah. Um, it's a brilliant book. I left it in the green room of Birmingham Glee. So I've been <sighs> without it for a week and a half. And I'm how, is that quite a recent book there? No, it was a while ago. And what's interesting is my friend was telling me John Ronson, because it starts, it's a really interesting take on like cancel culture and all that stuff because... John Ronson was a guy who loved Twitter pilots. <laughs> he was so in on them. He was like, this is great. Yeah. The people have the power to call people out when they're doing something wrong. I want to be part of this. Mm -hmm. So he was piling on everybody. What a fucking mad hobby. But that's loads of people's hobby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is. <laughs> it's shit loads of people's hobby. Yeah. And then uh, he kind of realized what it was that he was and he talks interestingly about like public shaming kind of died out in the 1800s mm -hmm. when people would get like part of like punishment in courts was like you get marched through the streets and people shout stuff at you yeah and that was like you that was it that was public game of thrones style yeah, like, yeah, shame, like it's shame. shaming yeah and then everybody goes okay they've had their it's done because it's an awful feeling for the the crowd to hate you oh god yeah it's terrible it really f fucks you up on like a really primal level to be rejected from the crowd yeah to, to have that much anger at you would be yeah. tough to deal with it's as much horrible. as we think we've got thick skins we can deal with a bad crowd or anything like that you don't to have hatred like visceral hatred yeah. is fucking tough that and the number of people telling you you're a fucking piece of shit yeah. is awful and it died out in the 1700s 1800s yeah but then it came back when came twitter, back with a vengeance when twitter arrived people would just like go after people and there's this mad story in it where a woman uh she would like she had like fucking 50 followers on twitter early twitter she just had like she worked in marketing or pr or something uh -huh. like that and she was for a business trip she had to go to like south africa from america uh -huh. and she just tweeted she would do like little like acerbic jokes like little, like she had a wee dark sense of humor but nothing too bad she tweeted um on my way to africa Hope I don't get AIDS. Lol, JK, I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, obviously deliberately like poking fun about at like, yeah. to me, it's like poking fun at the idea that white people can't yeah, get, can't AIDS, get it. I mean? yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's almost poking, poking fun at racist stereotypes. But so she gets on this flight, flight mode, 10, 12 hour flight, America to South Africa. And by the time she landed, she was number one trending on Twitter and had lost her job what the fuck yeah that's why we need wi-fi on flights these days man <laughs> <laughs> that's my one sole takeaway from that i used to hate wi-fi on flights we need it does it because it doesn't exist for like the like the internal uk ones does it but it's massive in america like yeah. all flights just have wi-fi i mean i kind of i like it i like the kind of like right i'll deal with that later cinemas as well get rid of that fucking bomb that phone over to the side for a while flight mode is bullshit though why? It's just such a lie. It feels like they didn't know how planes worked when they started selling uh -huh. commercial flights. So they went, just in case. Yeah. Can everybody turn off their phone? But I always think if it actually endangered the flight, they would take our phones. Yeah, and there'd be a lot more plane crashes than there has been. Yeah. There would have been so many more. The number of times you're just like, oh, it hasn't been on flight mode the yeah. whole time. Nothing's it's happened. No on one's noticed. Flight. But yeah, it was just like, they would take your phone. There's a, I also think it's about recycling. How do they trust us to put it in the right bin? They can't. They don't. They can't. We can't be trusted. It all goes in the fucking sea. I, I've said this to someone. <laughs> I've said this to someone, Victoria. And I'm glad we're tackling the big issues today. I said that to someone and I went, oh, look, they, they, they burn it, they chuck it away. None of that. No, no. As soon as it goes out, that's it safe. And I go, they sell the recycling. It just gets to the other side of the world yeah that we sell it to like indonesia or something yeah. like that this is fucking good stuff by the way fucking. this is top podcasting <laughs> recycling's a fucking conspiracy theory yeah. although i did i remember getting so angry at my uni at the time where i found out that all the bins just went in a big bin downstairs oh i would be furious like then they had like three different ones yeah like proper like this is for bottles this is for paper 
this is for general waste and then i was like had to go down into like the basement of the uni to like get some equipment or something for a concert and you went down and i saw like the bin store and i saw the cleaners just oh. every bag into one big fucking and you're like, bin. Fucking I was like, these pieces. Of shit. <laughs> I honestly think, see if you got more praise for recycling, people would do it. But you're just what praise just... you want? Germany, you can like, uh, and in America, if you like return glass bottles, you get like money for them. I, I mean, I'd do that. We need something to encourage it. What praise would you get? I don't know, but it just feels like when I put the wee stuff in the recycling bin. I just kind of look around, no one ever notices. It's just this. I've noticed within myself that uh, when my girlfriend's away, I don't recycle. Yeah. It's yeah. so bad. <laughs> Do you know what? It's not everything. It's just, see, when you get like chicken from Tesco. Yeah. And the top like film goes in the general waste. Yeah. And then you rinse out the plastic bit and that yeah, goes yeah. in recycling. You're just like, not today. There's no way. No, no supervision. It's not happening. Sometimes she arrives back. And she's, she's checking like, the bin. Bin <laughs> <Ben's> inspection. <laughs> oh, that's so I'm good, sorry, man. I didn't put it in the room. <laughs> Did you have like litter pickers in uh, primary school? Yeah, but it was more punishment. That was a punishment. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like it was litter proper, pickers, just like but chain those gang claws. Claws, man. So sick. Did that? But it almost felt like a wee treat as well, because you mm. were like you were the bad boy. You were out picking litter and everything like that. I was like. I'm fucking out. That's really shit. early, like, community service, isn't it? Is, it? isn't it? Yeah. It's probably, I mean, like, restorative justice. But we, if, if you did it, like, you weren't ashamed of it because you were just like, you got the claw. Yeah, why why the would claw, you be ashamed of getting the claw? It was pretty sweet. Yeah, um, yeah that was our punishment at school. L lines as well. Just lines. Right lines. Picking, yeah. So I don't think we had the right and lines thing. I wasn't very, no, I was very timid in school. Yeah. Very, very, very timid, yeah. Just right down the line, nothing. Never kicked out or anything. I kicked out, but only when I was having like panic attacks. Oh it's yeah, very strange boy. I remember. So that's all the bits in your show about the is panic and Skywalker true? No. Oh, that what I mean. That one makes me <laughs> up. The other two are true. The other two nicknames I make up, but I needed a. You need a third, an third. absolute belt. But it is true that I had lots and lots of like anxiety attacks when I was a kid. I was basically yeah. ag agoraphobic, agoraphobic. Yeah. One of those. They're the same thing, but like, yeah. I don't know how you're supposed to say it. Um, yeah, I couldn't like leave the house and stuff. It's just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you seem to be like, are you ever the result? No, no. It's so funny. People always think I'm like the least anxious person ever, but I'm just very on top of it. Yeah. I'm very chill because I have to be. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if I get at all stressed, it's 120. Like, right, it's okay. just dirt, like straight away. Like, from no, it'll, it's nowhere, it's never in here. It's zero. Right, okay. Or it's, I am freaking out. Yeah. Up. What's your techniques for calming down? Because I remember you posted ages ago a Wim Hof breathing method. So good. And I did it for a few days in a row. And I was like, this is fucking pretty good. I'll I change can, your life. I can't stick to anything like that. So I did try I'm it. I'm bad at sticking to it. I was supposed to do it today. Um, and, was, and is that something that proper works? Man, it's so good. You can go to the moon with that stuff. <laughs> it's crazy that like... Uh, like how you can like if every time i tell someone what the steps of it are they're like i can't do that yeah so it's you breathe like you and have you done it or like do you know what it is i know what it is yeah so you breathe gonna... in and out like fully in and out yeah. for like 30 seconds and then you breathe all the way out like completely empty yeah. your lungs and then hold it for 90 seconds mm. and people go I can't be you can't hold like no breath for 90 yeah. seconds because they think you couldn't even hold like a full like full lungs for yeah. 90 seconds but you just can yeah and i don't understand like i don't get but you just can and it like just like it's like control out delete on your brain yeah and is that the is that the go-to move no i mean i'm quite like bad at, it's more preventative stuff right of like just not letting stuff get to that point when it does get to that point the wim hof is good any kind of breathing music is good yeah uh like but like the same shit that i've listened to loads and loads of times but it's different sometimes I listen to like the most aggressive music like some what? people would think like really calming music is good like um the opening track of tired of the creators goblin i thought they've heard that the opening line is i'm not a fucking role model <laughs> 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 <You're like that>. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm a 19 year old fucking emotional coaster with pipe dreams. I'm like, <laughs> no. yeah, I am so calm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, man. I've weirdly got into like, I love like, uh, like music soundtracks, like Hans Zimmer shit. That does me. That's and supposed to like make you more tense. They're all really? built to do that. Not any of the, the not the, the big like inception ones like that. That'll freak me out. But the some of it has other ones. I'm like, mm. that's the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, a wee, he's a wee god, that man. I like him. He's a wee god. He's a wee god. I love Hans Zimmer. Hans you're, not, Zimmer. You're, not a, you're not a Zim dog. <laughs> <laughs> Hans Zimmer, I think, because I studied classical music, like, I think he's great. It's so, some of it is very, like, uh, uh, what's the fucking word? It's very, uh, like, der not derivative, maybe a little bit derivative. Yeah, yeah. Of, like, like if you listen to Gustav Holst's The Planets, yeah, I've heard you'll that. be like, that's, yeah, that's. I had that on the way here. Yeah, it's <laughs> sick, <laughs> isn't it? Tune. But you're just like, okay, you get where it all comes from, and it's not that you can't. It all has to come from somewhere. Like yeah. the, ha the Gustav Holst will come from fucking. Beethoven, he's getting he's got that from will somewhere. Come from this person, but yeah. it is just a bit like. It, it's slightly Hans makes Zimmer me... is hack You heard it here yeah. first Yeah <laughs> <laughs> He's the who's drinking of music <laughs> um, I I think it, I guess on some level It makes me a little bit sad That like And it's classical music's own fault That people like Ludovico Iannotti Or uh, Hans Zimmer Or those people Are doing stuff that is uh, The same as like What Gustav Holst would do Or like yeah. Shostakovich Or all these like Really cool composers but classical music is so up its own ass that people would never listen to a whole or shots of any of those yeah. things. So like, I feel he kind of makes it a bit more, I feel like he's like the gateway drug to that. Well, if you can like, I guess because it's attached to a film, that's such an easy way in. Yeah. Where you go like, but if you like rugby, you like Gustav Holst. Jupiter from the planets is the rugby yeah. World Cup theme yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. So ju it's just finding ways in. To stuff like that. Well, do you know Wolves fans sing a piece of Elgar at their games? Did he ask? Yeah, it's like a chant that they do. Because the Elgar fuck? was a massive Wolves fan. <laughs> of all the people crazy. to be a fan of Wolves. Yeah, I nearly wrote my dissertation about um, the links between classical music and football. Because um, loads of it's like, um, you know, da 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 It's from a fucking opera. Yeah. That's it's wild, like, man. We're like, we're, it, and I, I argued that football matches are the largest community music event in the world. Yeah. Because nowhere else do you get 20,000 people singing the same thing. That's true. You're a football fan? Yeah. Celtic, you're a Celtic boy? Celtic fan, yeah. Celtic yeah. boy. I grew up a Liverpool fan and then found a great deal of community in being a Celtic fan in London. Oh, um, yeah. Because it's hard to have community in London. But yeah. all my mates were mad Glaswegians. And I was by default a Celtic fan in Belfast yeah. because you have to be. Oh, yeah. Pick a side. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, good team to have. I mean, if you're going to have a team. Yeah, people kind of go to me like, is, does it not get boring just winning all the time? Mm, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Ask a Hibs or a Hearts fan. <laughs> Would you like to win some of the time? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> it's just sick. Although, to be fair, that, that season where, where uh, Rangers won the league, it actually was the most I watched because it was exciting. Yeah. And then this year was exciting as well. But yeah, it's like for different reasons... And there's there's always things to get excited about. I mean, to do four travels in a row is absolute it's fucking nonsense. But yeah. that's like a mad achievement. Yeah. No matter how many people tell you it's a fucking farmers league or whatever, <laughs> you're just like that's still like you still get a Champions League place at the end of it. It can't be that yeah, bad. No matter what, like it's it's fucking difficult to do. Like you you will fuck up over the course of oh four god yeah seasons. that's 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 not easy to do. I mean, yeah, yeah, there's some dog shit teams, but I mean. And then there was a 10 in a row thing where it was like... That was that, tense. I don't remember that. It was fucking... And then to, what did they, they did? Was it the day they got the quadruple treble? They were like, Neil Lennon's going to be the manager. And I remember like celebrating the win of the quadruple treble in the pub with my mate. And then they like gave him the job in the changing room after the yeah, game. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And I was... I turned to my mate and I was like, what? Why have they ruined my day? <laughs> Like, he barely, like, hobbled us over the line of that yeah. season. And they were like, he's the fucking man. <laughs> I met Neil Lennon once in a pub in Glasgow. Yeah? And uh, my mates... Was big, he fucked up, like? Yeah, him and... Who was the... Was it Johan Mialbe? The big, sexy, Swedish... 
that's was it his is he his number two or something like that was he part of the management team it rings a bell yeah i think he was ex celtic player and i can't remember how he found out my name was ralph and he went my name's ralph it's a fucking stupid name and i was just like Cool. Thanks very Neil much. Told me you told you you're a stupid name. Yeah, that's so a f- fucking stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't messing about. Oh my god, I know. that's so rude. I know. What a wee prick. I like. So when... I said every time I hear bullets going through his door, I'm like, he deserves some. <laughs> From Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> I always find it funny when um, Celtic fans do that whole thing when I say like the old firm they don't like it when people say the old firm it's like yeah. the old firm song indeed mate yeah. and I'm like but you know it's more fun yeah. if it is that mm. you know what I mean like it's fun that like I get taking the piss out of them like oh your club died but it's still the thing yeah because it's about the fans and it's the same fucking guys <laughs> I agree yeah. it's like a different team administratively and like financially and it's fun to hold that over them but to like take the name away, yeah, to, it's them. Yeah, the old firm's I've, about the fans, and it's the same fucking yeah, guys. Over same there. guys, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like they same got color a, it's not all the fucking Sevco fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it was the other way round, as if they're gonna go, no, 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 that's the same team. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They would have fucking been all over that. Well, we're all the same. It's that Billy Conley thing. Yeah, we're the exact. It's a disease. Yeah, we're all the same. But you're a bigot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fitness special. <laughs> See when you put stuff out like that, because you kind of come from a bit of a kind of like a hey, fucking just messing around. Do you ever get yeah. shit for that online? Yeah, I got followed by a Twitter account to, like two days ago, just before my Glasgow stand show. That was like uh, like a Rangers fan account. Yeah, and I like it. Do you know what? I really fucking like the. The Rangers fans to come to my shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, well, you can, you get it. Yeah. You get that I'm just joking. I actually like them more than some of the Celtic fans who, mm-hmm. anytime I say anything, go like, yeah. I'm like, well, no, that's not what this is. Yeah, this, this is isn't not rally. me saying stuff for you to like clap along to. Yeah. It's me poking fun at stuff and laughing about it. And we're all having Yeah, a good everyone's time. having that laugh. But- I would never, and people ask me because the show's like anti English or whatever. I don't actually think it is. It's, um, it's poking fun and stuff. Yeah. And it's my experience. of Exactly. Like, and I'm an outsider living in England. Yeah. And people go, oh, how's that show go down in England? And I go, great. It's yeah. better. Because people coming to a comedy club are aware they're yeah. coming in to laugh at something. Yeah. And it's yeah. fine. And like, I, I just think like, uh, yeah, so uh, there's some pushback. I've never got fucking like what happened to Chris. Yeah, I was going to say CMB put that thing Do out. You know, that was my fault, I think. <laughs> So, so for context CMB has this fucking brilliant joke yeah where he goes like uh fathers and sons like can't connect emotionally that's why yeah. we go to football matches so yeah. you can finally like hug each other but you need a you need somebody else to do something before you can hug yeah and it's all he hears when he sees the old firm or the fucking glasgow derby <laughs> is um is like tw- 10,000 Celtic fans going and, and 10,000 Rangers fans going, my dad never told me that he loved me. <laughs> it's a great bit. Daddy! <laughs> it's really funny. And I was like, yeah, I football is one of the only times I get emotional. And that's mm. really funny that, yeah, yeah, I'm so repressed and I need like men to do something good for me to like <laughs> cry, <laughs> basically, which is just insane. <laughs> Um, so I loved it Saw it on Twitter And like Quote tweeted it Being like This is really fucking funny All oh, right. And then he started to get low And I had, I just I guess I overestimated My following Where I was like They'll get it They're fine They're okay. But I do have quite a lot of Celtic fans Yeah In my Twitter following And football fans more broadly And people fucking Tore into him Yeah that was pretty hardcore It was really br- Like I, it, And it was literally like All that had happened Is he held up a mirror And went that's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm fucking not emotionally <laughs> depressed, I can do actually. <laughs> <laughs> does he does he say anything to you about this have you told him you think it was his your fault? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> spoke about it. I do my CMB impression on like every podcast, but my <laughs> CMB impression is Robbie McShane's CMB impression. Really? Which is just you have to sprawl. Yeah. And then you push your hair back and go. So sad, man. <laughs> <laughs> Which I need to stop doing because it's Robbie's impression. But yeah. it's, <laughs> Robbie doesn't do anyone else's podcast, so I'm doing it on behalf of Robbie. Go Perfect. see him at the Fringe. <laughs> yeah, I'll get CMB on here and I'll be like, just played back all the clips. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
suicide, man. Yeah. Oh, that's good, man. It's fucking great. Yeah, but I felt so bad that people would get so angry about I just didn't expect it at all. You just um, forget people are fucking idiots. Oh, like. mate. I always say, like, I think, like, 95% of the world are fucking idiots. Mm. And that's been, that's been generous. Just no thoughts. I've never, like, yeah. analyzed anything. In the and world sometimes world. I'll put myself, I'll slip into that 95% sometimes. I wish I was, I, w- I like not thinking. Yeah. It's so Sweet. good. I love yeah. to just fucking. Yeah. To just, to just, like, shut off me, like. Ignorance is bliss. This is why I don't understand, and I was trying to write something about this. I don't understand the, the concept of intrusive thoughts. Yeah. Really? I'm not choosing to have any. <laughs> every thought I've ever had has been a massive intrusion to my yeah, life. Yeah, every single one. I wish it was just... <laughs> I'd be yeah. so much happier. Yeah. I don't know. I don't mind the old intrusive thought. I'm affronted go, by every thought I've ever had. <laughs> I don't want to be aware. Yeah. I just want to sit there with like just white noise it. in my ears. <laughs> you can't choose to have a thought. Yeah. You don't choose to have any of your thoughts. So they're That's all true. intrusive. Where the fuck do they come from? Have you done, have you, are you trying to work this out on stage? Are you trying to do this as a bit? Yeah. It's tough, but isn't people, it? it's, it's a bit fucking... Uh, yeah, it's like, tough to kind of go like meta. where the thoughts come from. Yeah, it's really like... But I tell you what, if you we could, are nothing. Yeah, if um, you could nail that though, which is meditation, maybe I'll just yeah. lead them in a meditation. I had a notion to like make the crowd do a Wim Hof in a show. It's ten minutes. I mean, it would kill I've time. Seen. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've seen people do wash to run down the clock. <laughs> you see, some people get that forty-minute mark, and they're like, "Right, so let's play a game." And you're like, "Are you fucking kidding let's me?" On play here, a game. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. It's nice doing the show on the tour because it's the first time I've ever uh, been able to get on stage without setting my watch. Yeah. It's an interesting concept that I'd never really thought of where I went, every time you get on stage, you got to go, okay, this is five minutes. Yeah. This is 10 minutes. This is 20 minutes. And then even at the fringe, it's 55. Yeah. And you have to keep pretty fucking strict to that. You get on stage on tour. That's freeing. Last night it was nearly 70. Yeah. Yeah. Just a bit over, yeah. Yeah. That I mean, I love that. I love uh, when I MC. I don't wear a watch because mm. I don't want. I, I hate I, that. It's interesting. Yeah, I love when like showrunners go like, uh, "Do you need me to light you when you're MCing?" I was like, "No, I'll bring on the first act when they're fucking." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I've done everything I can to get them as ready as possible. Exactly. Yeah. And it it might be five minutes and it might be twelve minutes. And exactly. That's just whatever. But that's only recent. I used to like time it and I'd look down and be like, "Why am I timing this untimeable section yeah. at the start of the show?" I was just like, I just felt liberating to just get rid of the watch yeah so the tour's been going well tour is very exciting we had to kick out our first audience member last night yeah just just too many drinks man it's not it's not a like as much as there are comedians who will like encourage you to booze and have a good time mm-hmm. i don't think it's an art form where you should be drunk for no. it especially not a tour show yeah like if people are doing like 20 minute sets you can hold on to your attention for 20 minutes then have a break then hold on for 20 minutes then yeah, have a break, yeah, yeah. whatever but yeah, if, to see me do my fucking hour-long, fairly narratively structured show. Yeah. And he arrived smashed. Like, anyone who is pre-drinking for a comedy <laughs> night, like, don't. Yeah. Like, absolutely don't. It's such a, like, you just have to listen. Some people do not know how to go to comedy. This, this has been talked about a lot. This spot. Some people turn up, like, coked out of the tits. Oh, my God. To comedy shows, and I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're not going to a nightclub here. Yeah, you're cocaine. You're you're here to fucking sit and not talk for yeah. an hour. Has he been your worst audience member? Yeah, for sure. Like it was just, and I felt a little bit bad because he just fucked it. <laughs> like he was just too drunk. He, I don't think he was malicious. Yeah, he was like muttering to himself, and then turning to his mate or whatever. And then I'd asked at the start if he was with his parents. And he said yes, but I actually don't think they I were his tell, parents. Because you sat in the middle of these two old people. And he but, looked yeah. just like the man. He did. So I was like, are these your parents? But And then I was laughing because when I was like, you got to go, man. This is it. Yeah. Like, you're just pissing me off and everybody around you off. And he like staggered out by himself. And then if they are his parents, you, the they parents didn't leave. move. Oh, shit. They just sat there and were like. But to be fair, the fucking dad in the opening bit, he had the radio playing on his phone in his pocket. What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he had the radio playing? Like and in I was a, like, in are you phones? listening to the radio? No, like, out loud. <laughs> 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 I was like, are you listening to the radio? And he went, oh, fuck, sorry. And just turned it off in his pocket. And I was like, no, 
No. We have to investigate what was Who's going on. Who's taking a portable just, radio out went, no. I think it was just on his phone. Right. Like, listen, uh, I guess it, there might have been like a match on when it was like a Thursday night. It was the West Ham Europa League game. Oh, yeah, that could have been it, yeah. That. But like, I don't know, it was just bizarre. So that guy just kind of staggered out. And it's just frustrating because I don't want to like anyone to leave the show. And I bring it on myself slightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the online stuff. Like people think I'm going to... Yeah, just going to... Just talk to the crowd. But I make that very clear. Like in the opening bit, I go, I know some of you think I'm going to come on and ask everybody what they do for a living. Yeah. And then that'll be the end of the show. That's not what this is. Yeah. Second half's going to be an hour straight through. I'm pretty much not going to fucking talk to you. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think some people like come and are like, if I heckle, that'll make it good. Yeah. Because Vittorio was good at dealing with heckles. Are you finding you're getting that when you're doing like just typical gigs, you're getting people who are like, oh, it's Vittorio, I'm going to chip in here. No, because I think the people who like are keen enough to find like a lineup gig that you're on. Yeah, pretty hardcore comedy fans, I suppose. So yeah, they're like a comedy fan, so yeah. they'll like know that they're just there to like hear the stuff. Yeah. And, the, and there's like a lot of my audience, what they actually are is buzzing to see somebody else get spoken to. Yeah. But they don't want it to be them. Yeah. At it's, all, which is ideal. Yeah. It's that, it's that thing, you never want the people who want to sit in the front row to sit in the front row. If someone walks into a comedy club and goes, oh, is there space in the front row? Oh, awful people. Seat them the anywhere else. Yeah. Seat them at the back. Yeah. Because they're going to be annoying. Yeah. And they're going to be want to be the part of the show, like the star of the show. Um, but the tour has been really, really class. And it's it's interesting where some some crowds, you feel like you are teaching them how to be a comedy audience. Because yeah. Because I have a lot of people who've never been to yeah. comedy before. They're not comedy nerds. Like, they're not super fans of comedians in general like i'm the only comedian that they follow online yeah so it's interesting that sometimes they come in and they don't know yeah what's going to be so i go on before the support act and basically go set the tone this is what's going to happen yeah i'm going to chat to you for a little bit support act's going to be brilliant and it's going to be a break it's going to be an hour long show it's going to be okay just sit there <laughs> relax nothing bad's going to happen yeah it's okay and yeah. they just don't know how to be yeah. and um it's cool yeah, I like cool, introducing people to stand up because it's my favorite thing. Yeah, so to have to be like people's entry into my favorite thing is class. How does it feel weird to be like you know when you're putting that poster up and it keeps going like sold out, sold out, sold out? Are you, is there points where you're going like, holy fuck, this is mental? Oh, it's absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, I put on Glasgow stand and thought in my head, this is ambitious. Uh, the preview I did in Glasgow, I sold 60 tickets mm -hmm. and that was, I was like delighted, did like the old hairdressers and I was like, so if, if we half sell out Glasgow stand for the tour show, I think that would be great. Yeah. Because it's just my favourite room. Yeah, I, gorgeous, I yeah. love it and there's ways to lay it so it feels really good no matter how many people are in basically. Yeah. Put it on sale and 12 hours later, Tony, who's organising the tour, was like, Glasgow sold out. I was like, okay. No, it's not. <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? And then she was like, we've got another one. Do you want to put it on sale? I was like, yeah, I'll announce it like next week. By the time I'd announced it, there were like 10 tickets left. What the fuck? Man? It's absolutely fucking crazy. Yeah. And I really worry about like, yo, you get imposter syndrome. I, I'm a new comedian. I've been going for five years. Yeah. To set like to sell out shows that quickly. And like, I've worked really hard in the show and I think it's really good. But what's mad about like the position I am, I think some people, when they see you've got a certain amount of following, they think that you think you deserve it. Yeah. Or like you deserve to be, have more like fans or uh, mm -hmm. sell more tickets than they do. I know I sell more tickets than comedians who are better than me. I'm not under any illusion yeah. that I am like the best comedian. Jeff Innocent is a much He's better so comedian funny, than I am. Yeah. But he can't sell as many tickets as I yeah. can because of social media and just the generational thing and the whole fucking thing. I'm not under the illusion that because I sell more tickets, I'm better than Jeff Innocent. God, no. yeah, yeah. I, it's just a different thing. So I worry that I'm like, but you can't have that in your head. You can't have like a room full of people and be there like, this is shit. But that's the thing, the, the five years thing's interesting though, because you're comparing that to like someone who's been going 20 years who didn't have the clips and the access to the audience as easy yeah so it, the five years can't be compared to that 20 year guy so it, you could just be that that's like maybe the new trajectory for someone who's just doing that 
Yeah. It could just be because it's uh, 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 it's always people get wrapped up in like how long they've been going and everything like that. But I mean, if that's it, that's... that's For sure. And I, I actually, it's an interesting thing where you have to remember that uh, ticket sales aren't a marker of how good you are at the thing. Yeah. There's uh, there's TikTok stars who oh can my sell God. Um, like thousands and thousands well, and thousands. There's, there's of also Scottish football teams who can sell at stadiums who are dog shit. <laughs> 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 they are awful, awful teams. But you see people who make sketches online and then they do a live show and it's a Q and A for forty five minutes, mm-hmm. and you go, yeah. "Well, that's not as good as what I do, but they're selling more tickets than me." And it's just separate, trying to separate yourself from that and go, "I still just need to make the show as good as." as i can make but you're doing it you, i think you're doing it the right way though because you you're kind of going to a show this is it i'm going to be talking to you and then here's a here's a kind of club gigs i can talk to you blah blah blah. Everybody. yeah, yeah you're yeah, separating yeah. it pretty well but i still do it i give them what they're there for i do it at the start yeah before the sport act i do the i chat to the crowd a little bit and yeah. do some crowd work i basically like film that and then because i know people are there for that and i'm not under the illusion that but i'm what i'm really excited about is filming the show mm-hmm. and putting out material I'm buzzing for that. I think yeah. that's going to be so fun and like exciting and be like, hey, I can fucking do this as well. Yeah. This is stuff that like, I'm not just the guy that fucking talks to the crowd the whole time. What I you, have bets that are good. Yeah. What are you going to do with translations then? Is that going to be? Filming it in Liverpool on my birthday. Class. At the end of the month. At Hot Water? No. Too many things are filmed in Hot Water. It's fucking brilliant. It's one of the best clubs in the country. Yeah. But it would just look like everybody else's. Yeah. So I'm filming it in this really cool bar called Phase One which is like attached to a record shop. Okay. And the stage, the back of the stage is a big window that looks into the record shop. Have I had someone's talking about, has someone been on tour there recently? Was it maybe you? Have you been on tour there? Recently? I did a work in progress there a while ago. I, I think that's probably how I've heard of it. But I'm filming two shows there. Um, We recorded the audio last night and we're recording it tonight at Monkey Barrel to put out as like an album. Class. Um, that's really, really cool. My agent was like, there's more in this tour. You could sell more tickets. And I'm like, I'm done. Yeah, I can imagine after that long, you're like, let's fucking put it out. I did this show for the first time in September 2021. It was the first work in progress of translations. Shit, man. Which you're is ready to fucking burn it then. Yeah, I'm, look, there's lines that got added last week. Yeah, I was going to say like, from, from the fringe when I saw it, how different is it from them? It's like the bones of it are the same. Yeah. But there's... If you don't sound it, you've freshened it up. There's <clears> one, <throat> two... Uh, there's two extra, like, bits. There's two, rout- two routines that weren't in the Fringe show. Class. And there's, like, maybe three extra little, like, tags, like, expansions to bits yeah. that are there. Um, But it's been interesting because I can't expand on it too much because I've also got another R in my head. As well as this year's Fringe. So I've got... You've got, yeah, I've got I've done nine work in progresses of the one for August. Victoria, <laughs> <laughs> which is mad. Yeah, that's class. But I'm really excited about the new show as well. So that's really cool because I was like, "Fuck, how do you write the second show?" Yeah, because you spent five years writing your first show, and then you've got six months to write your next one. That's and it pressure. My head a bit, but um, it's cool, I've it? got some. Who do you think you are? I am. Yes. Boom! Nailed it. Do you get it? No. <laughs> it's classic. Very few people do. It's from a viral bowling video. Oh, the guy. Yeah. The guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. Yeah, I love yeah, that guy so much. That's funny. Because <laughs> yeah, I saw it like, you said it was like, like a stupid title and I was just like, are people going to come along thinking some kind of like genealogy show? Like, who do you think you are? Yeah. But yeah. it's the bowling guy. <laughs> I like that it sounds like a really interesting like fringe show about like introspection. And I think it is. It is about introspection. But I love that <laughs> it's, it's just bowling a really guy. stupid oh, bowling video. Oh, it's so good. Have you seen the other? There's another video of him. No. Before he retired. It's my favorite video ever. He, um, it's his last throw. I need to learn what it's called. His last bowl, mm-hmm. his last shot, <laughs> turn, is it throw. Let's see if we pull that up, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is a, a like a shot fails right bowl throw. In bowling, throwing the ball is called delivering the ball. No, his that's last that delivery. Seem right. no, his last delivery. That would make sense. That delivery. Right. Yeah. Yeah. His well, last delivery. Delivering the ball right. so seems before his too last... long. I'm just way up to deliver the ball. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say to my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before his last delivery, before he retires, he has like a little interview, just literally has the ball in his hand as about to throw it. 
And he's a very controversial figure in bowling. He's very outspoken, very loud. Like, oh, of, I can imagine from that, of, yeah. that one clip I've seen. A lot of, and you know, in that clip, he's shouting at a child in the crowd. <laughs> no. Because this kid was like clapping when he didn't get strikes. Because he thought it was good because he supported the other guy. I respect this guy so much more now. This, <laughs> I love him so much more now. At this kid. <laughs> But in the one before he retired, he's a little interview. He's very controversial and people think he's arrogant and all this stuff. And he goes, he goes, um, he goes, I just, he goes, I go, anything you want to say before your last delivery? And he goes, he goes, just want to say to all the fans, hate me or love me, you watched. That's all you could do. He walks over, scores a strike and retires from bowling. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I fucking like this guy. You watched That's All You Could Do? A lot. <laughs> and just, boom. Here's the fucking delivery for you, baby. <laughs> just so good. I think he's the coolest guy ever. Is he getting mentioned in the show? Yeah, well, I have you to have at the to, start. Yeah. I have to be like, it's called this. Does anyone know why? And nobody ever does. It's so annoying. I've basically, I thought my show was named after a viral bowling video, but I think my show was named after a bowling video. <laughs> See the name of the French show. Have you? I always think this because there's loads of French shows went on sale like yesterday, and I went on and had a look. You know when you see those like triple A comedy, I just want to go just quit, <laughs> just fuck just to get to the top of the just program. Just fucking quit. Yeah, if you're doing that, no one's picking a French show off the basis of oh, there's the first show I've seen. I'm gonna book that. Is this Some the point when you tell? Is this point Some where you tell me are. you've done it? No, I was <laughs> tempted to call my show fucking Angelo Vittorio to try and because I'm at triple A. I'm at the bottom of the fringe. Yeah. Program. I'm smiles down. But no, if you could just put like triple A Angeloni, that would be fucking your top of the yeah. That would be top true. of the book. Let's just call Vittorio Angeloni. Who do you think you are? I am. It's good. It's, yeah. It's just whatever. Like I mean, I uh, look. You get some people who flip through the program, but they've got to know. That's a weird person. Yeah, I don't think many. That's a weird are. person who starts on page one of the program and just keeps going until they see something they like. Surely you're just going flicking. There we go. Open it somewhere. Yeah. I think most people just open it somewhere. And they I don't think many people are even just... open in the program. Yeah, I think like many people, people are like. Know. I think most people who come to see me know. Yeah. Like me. Yeah. And hopefully you would think the fucking. I think that helped as well. Getting nominated last year helped people go. I think it helped turn a lot of the online stuff into ticket sales. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. That's because I think the online stuff was like, oh, yeah, he's good. I don't know what a whole show would be like. And then to get nominated, they go, oh, boom. It's probably Inst good. Instant credibility, right? You know there. what I mean? It's just like a little seal of approval where they yeah. go, oh, the actual show is good as well. Yeah. I'll go see that. So, are you, fucking, hopefully. like, because that was fucking pretty sweet to get nominated last year. Mm. Are you like, would you be bored, if, like, this year? Are you, what's your feeling on awards? I think now that you've kind of been in that and had that. Where are you now? It's funny. I thought I was over it. I thought I was like, right, yeah, I did the thing I wanted to do. I was so happy. And then did Leicester Comedy Festival. Didn't get nominated for everything. I was like, those fucking bastards. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but I think, I think you can, and I, I've said this before. I was like gunning for a newcomer last year. Like I was, I was. Yeah, that's fair. I mentioned it in the show. I said it at the top. I was like, this is what people try and do with their debut show. This is what that's I was trying to do. Why people show. save it for a debut? Because you're trying to get that. Absolutely. And, and I think many comedians wouldn't say that. And I'm just like, yeah, fair enough. I get that it doesn't, it doesn't seem very like becoming or dignified to be like, I wanted the award or I wanted the nomination, but I did want the nomination and Fuck I was it. delighted to get the nomination and to pretend otherwise was very silly. Um, and I'm basically, uh, I've got a rational opinion and then I know myself, the yeah. other one. So my rational opinion is, uh, while you can gun for a newcomer and I think that's probably just about within the realms of sensible to yeah. like try and get nominated for a newcomer, uh, and maybe be a bit disappointed if you don't, because it's a smaller pool of, People, there's maybe thirty or forty newcomer shows that were that are kind of in the yeah, conversation. The next, yeah. And you know vaguely if you're in the conversation kind of before the fringe, really, but they go see everybody. The whole thing, right? But to gun for best show. That's a big one. When there's actual thousands. That is wild. It's just so, so unlikely. It's like being annoyed if you don't win the lottery. Yeah. It and the effort you have to put yourself out there to ensure you were included in the running for that mm. in amongst the thousands of them that's you could be you could have the best show you might not even get looked at well this is the thing so I, like you would assume but then i know myself and i know 
the nomination day, I'll be like, <gasps> but I, 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 I don't think that's, there's anything wrong with that. No, and look, I, I'm not one of those people who's like, uh, I'm a competitive guy. Yeah. I don't, I'm not like competitive in terms of, it's only to benefit me. I don't want to like degrade anyone else, but I'm just like, it helps me work hard. Yeah. I want to have a brilliant show every year. And I don't think necessarily the panel's opinion is correct all the time. No. Um, I think they get stuff right. I think they get stuff wrong. What's really nice for me, and I feel very lucky, is the fact that I'm going to tour the show. Yeah. So worst case scenario, I just get to drill it for a month. Yeah. And if nothing else comes for it. And it's much more of a tour show than it is a fringe show. Oh, really? Whereas Translations is a fringe show that I'm taking on tour. Uh, and I don't know if that makes sense to fucking anyone else. It's very narrative. It's very structured. It has like a theme. Yeah. It's this whole thing. And I think shows benefit from a narrative and a theme. So I like to have something to make it feel cohesive. Yeah. But the next show is... Uh, I didn't have a tour in my mind when I was working on translations. Right. I had the fringe in my mind. Yeah. I very much have a tour in my mind when I'm... Class. So I'm like, this has to work in big venues. Yeah. To crowds of people who are just there for a night out. Not there Class, to consume man. like art at the fringe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is it... How fucking sweet is it when you see like when you get asked like photos after gigs and everything like that? When you have like I've met this person two three times before, that must be so sweet because a, a lot of the thing is like selling tickets is the hard thing. Mm. You might have the show, but you've not selling the tickets. Yeah, and you've kind of got that. And you're like just fucking enjoy the show. That must be a pretty. I love doing the show. Photos is grand. I had a slip of honesty on stage in uh, Bristol. Where, where I, because I say at the end, like there's a little bit of merch, and then if you want to get a photo, that'd be really nice. Um, and I said that on stage in Bristol, I was like, that'd be really nice. And, you, and then I just went, I mean, I don't want a photo with you. <laughs> <laughs> which is just, which is true, which is true. <laughs> like, but I get that it's nice if people want a photo with me, and I'm just, I like, I'm just super grateful that they like like my stuff. But I like in that I nobody asked for a photo after that show. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine like, <laughs> fuck that guy. It's so rude. But what's so funny is like they must know that yeah. I don't like. I'm not taking it on my phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This isn't from my photo deck. Yeah, so this isn't like, in my library. I was just like, I just said it, and I was like, oh fuck, that was rude. <laughs> <laughs> But it got to make laugh because it was so honest. Yeah. To just what, be like, what whatever. time was that? Hmm? What where was that? Bristol. Bristol. So you're gonna keep an eye on ticket sales for Bristol the next time. You're like, <laughs> weird. Bristol's not sold out. <laughs> but I just like, I I I get quite uncomfortable with that kind of stuff on some level. I think it's kind of like, I don't want to do. I'll never do that. Fucking, you pay extra for a oh, VIP meeting, and greedy, hell, you pay man. extra for a photo or any yeah. of that stuff. Like photos are fucking free, man. And if you like what I do, you've bought a ticket. I like saying hello to people. There's some people who say, talk for too long. Like you're just in the queue for merch or whatever, and you're just like, oh hey man, thank you for coming. They're like, oh man, I love your stuff. It's fucking great. Blah blah blah. And then they tell you something they heard on your podcast, and you're like, that's fucking cool, man. And you're just like, yeah, fucking move on. Like, like I've just got lines where I'm just like, uh, thanks so much for coming, man. See you next time. And then they keep talking to you, and you're like, man. <laughs> okay, we need to escalate. Take queue. it to the next level. There's a queue of people <laughs> who want to buy stuff off me, and I want to make money right now. <laughs> So, you're fucking ruining this so for you me you can fucking fuck off right now um, <laughs> so try that so try that nice. we you want to be gracious and then there's a point where you go uh, right man and then I'm just like you just build up little lines and it's also like as a potentially autistic boy I've got like scripts for stuff yeah. in my head where it's like um, oh no I really and they're like can I have a photo I'm like of course you can um, and I go thank you so much for coming uh, I really appreciate it yeah. that's what they say another thing that's really kind. That's if they said a third thing. Yeah. And then I go, um, uh, great. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. Yeah. And then if they don't leave after that, I go, give me two seconds. I just need to pack some stuff up. <laughs> and then if they still don't leave after still that, still taking the hint. Yeah. I just don't look at them. <laughs> <laughs> just, just stop making eye contact. But it's nice. Like I, li I like. There's, there's fans of mine that I know. Um. Who come to like everything. That's so good, man. And I've got like, there is, and I make jokes about it on stage, but I've got like lots of autistic people who come to the shows. Really? Which I think is really, really nice. I, an autistic girl told me that I'm her special interest. No way. I'm her fucking trains. <laughs> 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 Just you to see her face. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. Shout out to Ivy. She's fucking cool. 
Shit, man. That's, that must be pretty cool. But it's nice. It's like, I just like to... I, my audience is such a cool mix of people as well. Like you saw yeah. it last night. Mm. It's all ages. It's a good split of like men and women. Yeah. And it's like rowdy lads that are maybe a bit much. But they there's good energy in that if they get it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's very like introverted, like artsy types who don't know quite who to be. It's a good mix of people, man. Yeah, because you don't want it to go like, oh, there's a lot of <laughs> sausage fest in here. Yeah, yeah you, you don't, don't want to be... a lot of leather jackets. You don't want to be a comedian who performs to just men because then you're doing something weird. But also you don't want to be a comedian who performs to just women because yeah. then you're not funny. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. <laughs> like, there's that Trying to think who that could be. Is that... Matt Rife. Who the fuck is this guy? I've seen him like... Like a few yeah. times on... He's one of the biggest comedians in the fucking world now. And he just loves how hot he is. Oh, really? And he's like flexes on stage yeah. the whole time. He's huge on TikTok as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen And like... his audience are just brainless women. Right, okay. And that's not to be like all women are brainless, but the women who go to the show because they think they're going to fuck him yeah. are brainless idiots. Like, My God. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. Have you seen... He's a millionaire comedian. Is he? And you're just like a... Who the fuck? Is he just... Off the back of comedy, he's like a millionaire, or is he? Yeah, he's, got like, other... he's got like two million TikTok followers, yeah, okay. more Holy maybe, shit. maybe two million on like Instagram or whatever. Fuck. But he's just like huge, and it's whatever. But I do think like he's leaning into his fucking. Oh god, yeah, that's he's, he's doing like, that. He's like wears like tight tops and all. I just like what a gimp. I deliberately dress so nobody looks at my body ever. <laughs> I'm just like, you don't want to be sexualized. Leave me alone. I just want to look like I'm in a fucking, like a Uniqlo yeah. mannequin. Just, <laughs> 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 just absolutely like, like boxy. I love boxy. That's yeah, I, I go fucking, this is. I want to be a rectangle a... with a face. That's <laughs> what I want to be. <laughs> Matt Rife has 12.6 million on TikTok. Yeah. Fucking hell. It's Matt. Have you seen that Brendan Schaub is doing a UK tour? I've seen. He's like, I got like an Instagram ad, but like, come and see me at the O2 in Glasgow. And I was like, no one's close. That's another one where um, my mate got asked to open for him. No way. And I was like, man, do it. Yeah. Can like, you name who it was? We can take it out. No, uh, it was just a guy from back home. All right. Um, but it was like, his is an interesting one. And I, like his career is so strange. And I don't like as much as I just fucking have. I don't particularly like shitting on other comedians because as as a comedian who's been shit on a lot by other comedians. Uh, do you get that though? Yeah. Who does it though? I don't get Lots and lots and lots of people. Why are they doing it though? I don't get it. Is it just because you're like fucking... I, I come across arrogant when I like self-promote a lot. I've spoken about you know it a lot like fucking promote yourself, man. That's it. Yeah, I mean, you just have to be... There's an element of jealousy. Team, There's got to be an element of, of jealousy. Some of that, but I get how it comes across and I get sometimes I come across like a dick or whatever, but that's... And I say stuff as a joke that people don't realise is a joke. Yeah. The comedian telling a joke is doing jokes. I mean, fucking... Yeah, on. but I say it off stage as well. Like, <laughs> Mike, who I do my podcast with, was like, you need a brick wall sellotape to your back so people always know that you're joking. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's you good. need a comedy club <laughs> to be at all times. Because anytime I'm joking, people think I'm being serious. And anytime I'm being serious, people think I'm joking. It's so bad. Like, I'll, I'll like, just because I think it's really funny before I go on stage, like at a lineup show, we'll just lean into something and be like, I'm going to fucking smash this. Because that's funny. Yeah. It's an insane thing just to say. say fucking about. And then Mike, I said to Mike, I was like, but who would ever say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's funny. And Mike's like, you said it. <laughs> you said those words and you're annoyed people are... Listen. If you in your head going, this is going to be so stupid, I'm going to say this yeah. for a laugh. I say things that I think are so stupid and arrogant that I think it's funny, yeah. but I think some people take it at face value. I talk about it in my next show. Yeah. Lots and lots of comedians don't like me, and I think that's an interesting position to be in. I, lo I kind of lost my right to a first impression with a lot of comedians because they clip of my podcast. Yeah, I suppose, went, yeah, went they've seen lots they've... of WhatsApp groups. Yeah, that's fair. That I, it wasn't a clip that I made. Oh, really? A clip that another comedian made of my podcast. How the fuck did that happen? They like screen recorded it. Dirty bastards. And sent it around. Very out of context. Almost the, like they managed to make it seem like the opposite of what I meant. Surely any comedian would know that that's like, taking some of that out of context. But it's the fringe and it's uh, playground dramas and it's people oh, who yeah. are. It's a toxic environment. If you're not having a good month, there's always someone that, that people latch on to to really slag off. Yeah. Look, I slag off my wife. Fair play. Sell tickets whatever yeah. way you want to sell tickets. If that's the way you want to build your career, I, for it, I don't tell people how to be a fucking accountant. 
that's just a different thing than what I'm doing. And I just see my yeah. life as a different thing than what I'm doing. Yeah. But I think the, yeah, this kind of thing went around and I had to learn a lot about how to just like f- let other people talk about me. Yeah. With, I can't, you're never going to control that. Yeah. yeah. Never, ever. But and people need point. someone to hate. People and it's need a good like point a to get to that French. early on to just go, I don't fucking care what yeah, you think. It is impossible. Yeah. You always do. I always do care what people think. Uh, but you know, like you just can't let it fucking yeah. wreck your life. Yeah. Fuck you people. Fuck you. Fuck the hoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask. Because I'm better than you. <laughs> See, now someone's going to think that's serious. I'm going <laughs> to clip it. <laughs> clip it. That's the clip for the episode. <laughs> um, I, like, I've always wondered, if, like, could you take quite big... No, I, mean, I wouldn't say big swings in your... your, your quite big swings? Yeah, yeah. Some of them are. Have you, is there anyone you've done that and you've thought, you've watched it back and you've gone, I can't put that out. For the crowd work stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I put out a clip today where I was like... I've not watched it yet, man. I literally um, just saw it as I came in. I just... There was somebody... I said something where I, I was in Leeds and I was like, oh, is there any like Bielsa fans in? Like Marcelo Bielsa, yeah. who's the Leeds manager. And they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh, I, I do realize some of you won't know what I'm talking about because loads of you are autistic and don't like football. And then that got a decent laugh. And I was like, does anyone in here hate uh, Bielsa? And a guy laughed and I was like, oh, what was that? And he went, oh, I thought you were going to ask if anyone hates autistic. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I, thing, I was like, I hate some of them. <laughs> and then I just made jokes about how like, you should hate some of everybody. Yeah. And then on stage, I was like, it should be okay to say, like, I hate some black people. <laughs> and this has been clipping put out. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> of all the days to ask this question. I was just like, I was just like, that's funny. And yeah, I take kind of big swings. There was one where, um, same guy actually in the front row in Leeds, he had like a tick. And I was like, do you have Tourette's? And he was like, maybe. And I was like, I think you do. Yeah. And then I like did his tick back to them. And apparently you're really not supposed to do that. But he's undiagnosed Tourette's. So I think it's fine. Right. That really made me laugh. Remember Olaf Falafel got in trouble? Yeah. Um, for his, uh, I keep shouting cauliflower broccoli. I think I've got Florets. Mm. That like one like best joke of the fridge. Yeah, so good. And the Tourette's Society were like, this is a very offensive thing to say. And I was like, bro, That's saying offensive stuff is your thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I follow a guy on Instagram. He's, he's an autistic, not an autistic, uh, Tourette's barber. And he's just giving... Oh, yes, I've seen him. He's yeah, just yeah, giving yeah. people haircuts and he's just fucking going wild yeah, with fuck it. Fuck off. Yeah, it's yeah, so, so fuck funny. The queen. <laughs> fuck yeah. the queen. Well, I had the one at Monkey Bar where there was uh, the lesbian lady who had Tourette's. Yeah. Oh, that was oh, fucking... She was so fun. Yeah. She was such a good laugh. She was autistic as well. She did get well. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, was great she was about good. the whole thing. She loved it. But this is the thing. People love being made fun of. Yeah. People it. love being made fun of in a kind and like loving way. Yeah. There's a way to make fun of people that isn't mean. It isn't punching down. I make fun of all sorts of people in my yeah. show, but it's like, it's just inclusive, mm-hmm. I think. And there's a way to do it. There's people who are like, you should be able to make jokes about everyone. And, and they're like, just saying nasty yeah, things Yeah, they're just horrible people. people, yeah. You can't, you shouldn't be nasty to people, but you want to include them and yeah. be, and I think almost to make fun of someone is to be like, like to make fun of someone's like Tourette's is to be like, that's not what defines you. Yeah, I can make fun yeah, of that yeah. without making fun of you. Yeah. You still have value as a person. I think still think you're a good person, yeah. but it's funny that you say cock every so often. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very funny. <laughs> Are we? Is that us? About an hour, yeah. Oh, class, man. This has been fucking. It's been sweet, man. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Um, there's a one last little bit. Just chuck it to guests at the end of the podcast. It's called suggest a guest. You suggest a guest. I've got to try and get them on the podcast. It can be realistic. It can be anyone you want, and I'll try and get them on the podcast as another guest. I would say McShane, but he won't come on. I tried him. Uh, I literally I texted him yesterday about coming on later on, and he was just like, "No, I haven't." He doesn't do that. Does he not? Is he not? He a- doesn't like people knowing who he is. Really? It's very funny. <laughs> I love him the best. He's one of my favorite comedians in the world. You told me like get in touch with this guy for spandex. Yeah. And about a month later, I got him on. Fucking incredible, man. Yeah, he's brilliant. And that he was just doing like new material as well. Yeah. And then I saw him do. First time I'd ever seen him do a club set, Monkey Barrel, maybe about two, three weeks ago. 
roofed it. Oh, it's crazy. It's on, and I was just like, oh my fucking God, yeah, man. Yeah, amazing. But yeah. he hates the concept of people knowing about him. Really? So check out Robbie McShane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I'm trying to think who else. Um, it doesn't have to be could be comedian, could be anyone you want, man. There's a guy who um did a lot of the English support dates, uh, a guy called Liam Bolton. Yeah. Who is full blown mad. I love having mad openers who are like a bit fucking cracked in the head. He gets so st- he like gets so stressed out by doing stand up comedy. Really? He forgets all his jokes, <laughs> goes on stage <laughs> and he goes like the whole time. He's just like this. <laughs> And at the end of every joke, he goes, that's that one. <laughs> yes. And then he's, he's just, I think he's, he makes me laugh more than anyone in the Perfect. fucking world. There's great stories of him like booked for a 20 at hot water, goes on, hoovers the stage and leaves after three minutes. Oh my, this is gonna. This he's, is I gold. think he's the only comedian in the world. Does that make he, sense? Like he's yeah. the only one who's like properly doing it. So Liam, Liam Bolton. Bolton, he's fucking good answer, brilliant. man. I he's like so that. Good. A lot of people have done some unrealistic ones, so that's I like that one. Yeah, fucking Lucy K one. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting on the other side of the curtain, wanking. Get job on while he's in town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, that's the thing. I've started messaging people just who are just like in town, like even With like Monkey Barrel up the road, man. Like, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, everyone's been cool so far. Get Matt Rifle. <laughs> get all the people I've slagged off yeah. on this episode. Of. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> no, I really do hate Matt Rife. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Matt Rife. I hate it because sometimes people comment under my videos that I'm an Irish Matt Rife. And oh. I'm like, go away. Yeah. I know you think this is a compliment, but there's nothing worse. You could, I'd rather you were like, this is shit and not funny. <laughs> Brilliant, Pissing man. Me off. But yeah, cool. Come see me at the Fringe. Come and see. Yeah, I'll put all your ticket links in all the episode description and everything Fun. like that. Lovely stuff. Cheers, man. Thanks for coming in. Rock and roll. Cheers, baby. Goodbye. Fun. That was great, man. Cheers, man.